Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the Sketchbook Podcast. And today we're going to be talking about a bunch of things. Maybe I think, I think to be more specific, we're going to be talking about how to start and learn drawing and, you know, drawing fundamentals, make a living out of it, you know, a bunch of things. This is going to be a very structured podcast. I'm going to show you that. Anyways, let's get into the intro. <laughs> If you're wondering why my voice is very crispy, you know, it's crispy, crispy. It's crispy because, you know, we got a new mic. We got a really badass looking mic that's big and white and it's got this very vintage look to it. And because of that uh, upgrade, my voice is gonna sound crispy. <laughs> so yeah, anyways, jokes aside, let's get into the topic of this podcast and that is how to start drawing and how to learn drawing. So this is probably one of the most asked questions I get, uh, I get and I've gotten in the past and I'm constantly getting emails about it and I get and understand why people sort of wanna know that answer, right? Like, you know, it's most, most of them are starting out or young or both and, uh, and they wanna know what's the roadmap? What's the roadmap in terms of learning drawing and illustration and character design and make a living out of it. So that's what we're going to do in this podcast. We're going to, I'm going to show you, or I'm going to talk to you about what I think is a process for learning drawing and starting to learn drawing and to make, you know, to go about making a living out of it. But the thing is, the goal is this to make a living out of art, but not everybody wants to make a living out of art. Some people just wants to learn art. And in this podcast, right, we're going to we're going to divide this into a two part podcast. The goal for us being, of course, to make a living out of art. And that thing comprises of two individual components that we need to sort of understand. One is the skills part of it, the technical aspects of art and drawing and illustration or whatever you want to learn and the business side of things. How do you take those skills and techniques and things like that? and turn and make a business out of it or a living out of it or you know something out of it you know where you get papers that is of value in the world bank and it's called money so yeah so that's what uh, no, no, no. we're going to be covering the skills part of things on this podcast this is going to be part one on the next podcast is all be, uh, is all going to be about the business side of things so when i'm sort of talking to you on these subjects. I'm also sort of trying to clarify my thoughts and come to better conclusions. So I already have a good understanding of how these two things work, at least for me and, at, and for most people. But, you know, I want to even come to a, even a better conclusion, hopefully by the end of this podcast. And that's why I'm talking, moving my lips, saying stuff, saying random things. So yeah. <laughs> All right. So this podcast, like I told you, is going to be about skills. And we're gonna focus specifically on the question of how to start drawing and how to go about learning drawing. We're gonna be very specific in terms of the kind of drawing that we are trying to discuss or talk about, which is sort of cartoonish, character design based, slightly a, a bit of a touch of realism here and there with the way things are being rendered. But you know, I'm gonna be, focused on that because that's where I have most of my experience in. So yeah, we're going to stick with that. So all right. The first part of this podcast is learning 101 because that's the most important thing that we need to understand in order to know where to start and to go about learning how to draw illustrations and character designs and characters and worlds and things like that. All right. How do you learn things? That's a question we need to ask. All right, well, Keshav, okay, sure. how do you learn things, Keshav? Sure. Well, let me show you how I learn things, or at least how I've learned to learn things. First up, you need to understand and define the kind of skill that you wanna learn. By the way, most of the things that I'm talking about in this podcast, I've talked about it before, but I wanna go a bit in detail about it, you know, elaborate on things. So step one, like I told you, first you need to, 
establish or define the skill that you want to learn let's take an example i in an individual wants to want to learn cartooning there you go that's a skill right there cartooning is the skill but the thing with cartooning is is just it's, it's it's too big to just put it into one thing so what you need to do next after you define a particular skill is take that skill and divide it into a bunch of mini skills that are small enough and then makes up in a combination of those things and those combinations together makes up the big skill so if you take cartooning well let's say let's divide it into say a mini skill in a into a couple of mini skills okay what is it involved one you need to be able to draw you know funny looking characters you need to be able to draw some sort of humanoid creatures and figures you need to be able to draw animals see these are three skills and if you further define uh, divide those mini skills into even smaller mini skills you might go okay if you if i want to draw say cartoonic animals i need to be able to do, make sure that i know shapes and forms better i know i need to know gestures well i need to know, I, i need to sort of be good at observation see these are all mini skills so once you define those mini skills the next step is to take one of those mini skills and schedule them into a practice let's say like i told you in the previous example you want to draw cartoony animals and you first start by learning to master a drawing cartoony animal heads well so you're going to wake up today morning you know and schedule in say 30 minutes to 1 hour and look at observations and pictures of animals and try to create a stylistic representation of those uh, animals heads in your sketchbook do five studies or do 10 studies or do 20 studies or 25 studies or 100 if you're a crazy person <laughs> so you know you get the idea once you make the practice once you're done with making the practice what happens is you take feedback you look at what you have practiced you look at what you have observed and you take some sort of a feedback and make a course correction this is very very important and this is where a mentor or a teacher or someone who's already been there comes of use so to sort of summarize how do you learn learning 101 define the skill that you want to learn dissect those uh, big skill into a set of mini skills and three you need to take one of those mini skills and schedule that in into some sort of a practice session and four look at what you have practiced and take some sort of a feedback from your practice so that you can make a course correction and repeat the whole process again it's a cycle right so that's how you learn things and drawing like any other skill is a set of mini skills together because drawing is a c like you know if, if someone says man how do i learn drawing well there's there's too much to learn and there are too many things to go about it and you need you need, you need to sort of understand that it's you need to tackle one part of the c at a time you know you need to conquer one part of the c at a time and you need to know what which parts you want to conquer and in what sequence because sequence matters something that i've learned you know you need to you just it's not just about learning a bunch of random mini skills it's about learning a bunch of random mini skills in a sequence so you you get a some sort of an idea of structure in terms of the larger skill so hopefully you guys are getting what i'm saying if you have any questions right just drop a comment down below i'll try to clarify that down below or in the future podcasts so yeah drawing is a bunch of mini skills and you need to sort of look go go ahead and dissect what are the mini skills that you require in order to master that all right for me the kinds of drawings and illustrations that i do are say character designs and cartoons and sort of cartoony 2d flat colorful you know your typical cartoony cartoony kinds of drawings and illustrations and i'm going to be talking about so i'm going to show you the fundamentals that i have focused on in the past that i'm focusing on even now but it is very similar or this applies to uh, to say other kinds of drawings as well uh, other kinds of 
or no not kinds other styles of arts as well, art as well like such as say such as realism and paint uh, not probably not painting but uh, some sort of other what do you, what else do you have man i don't know much <laughs> yeah anyway so you get the idea so that is a general set of mini skills that you can learn in order to understand how to draw everything that you want to draw all right let's get into the fundamentals all right the fundamentals of art and drawing or my fundamentals of art and drawing and fun the fundamental sort of varies from person to person but there are some general things that will apply to pretty much every category you know that is out there but here are the drawing fundamentals that i focus on first up i divide my fundamentals into two things tangible fundamentals and intangible fundamentals tangible fundamentals are the things that you can sort of point to and you can look at them in real life and go wait hey away i i can learn that i can do that you know it's very tangible it's you can see them and you know understand them intangible fundamentals is what i'm sort of having trouble defining because those are the things that are hard to point to and i feel learning those intangible fundamentals is what that separates the good artists from the really revolutionary artists that we all probably know in you know different fields so what are the tangible fundamentals of drawing so like i told you before right we're going to be specific in terms of you know in relation to cartooning and character design and things like that so the fundamentals that i focus on when it comes to say drawing characters environments and worlds are number 1 lines for me lines is the a line is the single most individual unit of a drawing and having line control and having control over your tool which is not the pen or the pencil or the whatever tool that you're using it's mostly the hand and learning to say master the line the different kinds of lines the straight lines the grouped lines the individual lines the waves the curves the zigzags and all kinds of those lines all these lines it's called mark making right the the world of super artsy fancy terms is called mark making i didn't know that a, a, a couple of months ago <laughs> i know that right now right it's called mark making you're making a mark and line for me is where you start because this is the most fundamental unit of a drawing you need to learn to master lines next up number 2 shapes different kinds of shapes basically i have what i call the big 3 and every other shape is just a combination of these shapes in some way shape or form the circle the square and the triangle you need to master these shapes or you can go about it and group them into a different category like this circles or sort of uh what do you what do you what do you call them sort of like a very organic shape and ellipses or some sort of like an organic shape and uh, your triangles and squares are like more like straight lined shapes uh, and rhombus and you know other other mathematical geometric shapes that are out there which i don't know the names for uh you need to sort of learn to master and understand no no master the process of drawing and understanding shapes different kinds of shapes because drawing is what you know shapes is what uh, drawings are made of the characters and the illustrations and the designs and you know this is what they're made of and in addition to shapes number 3 would be forms shapes are two dimensional forms are 3d so if you just look at my drawings i just put out a video saying focus on you know for a draw see in 3d and draw in 3d you know you look for forms forms are three dimensional objects that exists in space you need to learn them so lines shapes forms forms i have something called the big 5 your uh, sphere your cube your cone your what else man cylinder and your pyramid yeah <laughs> the these are your big five shapes and think of these shapes are no, not shapes no, no big five forms think of these forms as clay and a combination of these forms is what makes up the structure of your drawing think of a building and the bricks in the building are these shapes and forms but to build a building you need a skeleton and that skeleton is gestures that is number 4 
you need some sort of a spine for your drawing. If you look at the human body, right? There is a spine that holds the body together. That is the central piece of thing that sort of organizes the nervous system, the muscular system, the, uh, the, the skeletal system and things like that. It's the spine, right? Gesture for me is what that breeds sp the spirit into a drawing, the flow in the drawing, right? You need to master that. If you say take any sort of characters or cartoons or things like that, you know, if you, have you seen those old Disney cartoons? They're like so flowy, right? Flowy and full of life and they seem so organic. They don't seem stiff, right? Gesture and knowing how to breathe gesture or flow into your drawings allows you to sort of, you know, uh, do that or achieve that result. So number four is gesture. Number five is tone, right? So now that you have learned to draw the lines, you've used the lines to draw shapes and you've used the shapes to understand forms and you've put those forms together to draw a drawing and you've used gesture to breathe life into your drawing. Now you have a drawing. You have a drawing right now in front of you of a character or something that you really like. You need to add some tone to it. It needs to exist in reality. So that means you need to understand light and shadow, right? Light and shadow. Where does the light fall? Where is the shadows formed? Where are the cast shadows, the object shadows, the occlusion shadows? How does light travel from one object to another object? How does that light affect the color of, the, uh, of that object? And how hard the light is? How soft the light is? And you know, things like that. That is tone, light and shadow. That is your fifth thing. So the reason why I'm saying all this is right, you need to take each and every single one of these, these things and sort of practice them one bit at a time. That's what I did. I'll get to that story of mine, right? how I personally did it. Then you need to understand color, how color works. What are the meaning or the, the definitions or the symbolic definitions behind a particular colors or a bunch of colors. You know, some, some people say red means danger, purple means royalty. Blue means something else. I don't know. You know, you get the idea. Green means peace. Or is it, is it white means peace? I'm not sure which one. <laughs> so yeah, color theory. How do you choose a combination uh, you know, of colors? Color harmonies, learning color harmonies, you know, things like that. You need to understand how to use color to bring, you know, bring colors into your drawing. For some reason, I feel like I'm I'm talking like a Russian, you know, bring, okay, I'm just making fun of Russian view right now, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't know, you know, I, for some reason I'm blah, 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 going blah, blah, blah. I don't know how, I don't know how to put that into words. So anyways, that is the <laughs> sixth thing, color. Seventh thing is design, character design. You know, there are some fundamental principles of character design. They're very simple. You can pretty much Google them and, uh, you know, learn about them. And you use those principles to sort of go ahead and draw your own or design your own characters. Uh, because, you know, it's, it's very hard, right? Once you know how to draw everything, you know, using these lines, shapes, forms, gesture, perspective, and things like that. Oh yeah, perspective is another thing. Before color, I would definitely add perspective. I don't know why I missed that right here. Anyways, we you know, once you know how to draw something, the question comes, okay, how do I draw on my own and how do I design things on my own? And that's where design principles comes in. So for people who wants to get into character design and don't know where to start, simple. Learn five to six principles of design or character design and start from there and build your own principles or create your own principles. You know, a couple of examples of design principles are say, use of contrasting shapes in your drawing. Use of say, a symbolic shapes to represent a character. For example, you know, Jafar in Aladdin is mostly triangular and angular based because he's a villain. And uh, Genie is more bubbly and sweet and happy and he's designed with more round shapes, you know, something like that. Use of symmetry, use of straights and curves and use of, you know, balancing uh, things, you know, things like that. So these, these are some of the design principles, silhouettes, you know. Go ahead and learn these principles and use those principles to design your own characters. It's as simple as that. Next up would be composition. I don't know which number we are on. I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, ten is composition, right? Tenth one, 
learn how to compose where in the frame or on paper do you want your character to exist to make it look pleasing to the eye right i have personally le- never learned composition because you know i grew up watching films and for some reason after you watch a lot of films you get an idea how to actually compose things and put characters in place so i've never really struggled with placing things or learning composition but there are many compositional tricks that you can use to sort of make your frames a lot more interesting so i would definitely learn go ahead and learn these things so these are the tangible drawing fundamentals now why did i list out all these things for you guys because uh, i did that because you can go ahead and pick one of these things and practice schedule them in and practice uh you know those mini skills okay kesha how do you do this how do i practice this thing is probably the first question that's coming to your mind well to answer that how i did it was uh when i started say practicing lines and shapes you know one of the mini skills of drawing i used to say draw a bunch of sh- circles and squares on a sheet of paper then lots and lots of lines longer lines shorter lines super short lines super long lines curves waves you name it i drew it i did that it's boring grunt work but i did that you schedule that in and i'll also at the end of this podcast uh, i'll tell you a sort of a better way to go and approach it without it being boring because that's one of the biggest problems uh people face when it comes to say practicing these fundamentals you know fundamentals are boring who wants to do that right who wants to draw a bunch of shapes even though it's going to make them better artists nobody right so <laughs> that's the idea right there uh so yeah those are the tangible drawing fundamentals okay kesha what are the intangible drawing fundamentals you were talking about things that you cannot point to well my friend I don't have a lot but I'll tell you some of the things that are coming of or some of the things that I've listed down right here in front of my notebook which you probably cannot see if you're listening to this podcast anyways the first one is seeing seeing what do I mean by seeing well observation this is very hard for me to sort of point to and say oh what do you mean by that I don't know this is what it means by right no no well a, a good quote comes to my mind by uh, formentin or fromentin he's, he's some old renaissance artist or something he told art is about the act of making the unknown visible using the tools of the known or something like that i'm i'm definitely butchering the quote but you know it's it's it, even sashikant right is like way word <laughs> no no i think I, I, let, let me rephrase that quote i think it's something like art is the artist making the invisible known by the means of the visible yeah something like that yeah i think i is i got it <laughs> but that's what seeing comes in seeing is one of those invisible things that you need to sort of go ahead so when you're looking at the world right you're observing things you're looking at things you're seeing things and you're going and taking that information into your brain and processing that and when you process that information you come out with a a processed piece of information which you used to create your own art and the way people process information is different from person to person and you need to develop that skill of processing you need to learn to observe things and look at things and say hmm how can i process that information because that's what creativity is all about right at the end of the day there are that is a problem that you need to face and there are a bunch of people and these people need to come up with a solution and the one that comes up with a really unique solution is celebrated and often a solution is celebrated as art and that's what it is right you know how, how can you lay the bricks in front of you well one guy lays it on top of each other one guy does the zigzag patterns one guy makes a sculpture out of it right you praise the guy who makes a sculpture because he sees present is something different or unique it depends on the scenario and the context but you get the point right yeah so <laughs> even sashikant here is agreeing with me sashikant by the way is the podcast producer right now he's a video producer <laughs> he's also my friend call us uh, call it friend so yeah anyways you get the idea seeing observation okay how do you develop this thing 
I really honestly don't know. You, I think, I think you can do that by actually looking at the mini skill itself. The name of the mini skill itself, which is see things. Go ahead and see stuff. You know, see trees in front of you. See a sky. See, go and see a museum. See a movie. Watch a bunch of Netflix shows and eat cheese balls because that's what I did for lunch. <laughs> I was watching Suits, by the way. Good show. I'm on season eight. Anyways, <laughs> getting off track. You need to go and see stuff. You need to see things and process things and come up with ways you can sort of process them. Different ways of processing them. Oh, okay, I saw that stuff. How can I process that? How can I take that processed information and turn that into some sort of a beautiful piece of art? You need to ask yourself that. This, by the way, applies to also all the other kinds of mediums, filmmaking, writing, music, everything, right? Seeing, that's the key right there. The next intangible thing is story. Will Terrell, there was a guy named Will Terrell, no, not Will Terrell, Will Terry, yeah, Will Terry is the name of the artist. And uh, one of the best pieces of advice I got from him in one of his YouTube videos was, if you want to make your drawing instantly interesting, in an instant, with just this one little trick, you put a story into that drawing. That is the most key piece of ingredient right there that, you, that makes and that's the mini skill right there that you need to sort of understand and master the art of storytelling. Humans thrive on stories and storytelling. You know, we want to tell stories each, uh, to each other. You know, we need food, shelter and clothing to survive, but we need stories to thrive, right? You know, you can't live without stories or it's just boring. Like, you know, we all tell ourselves stories. I'm going to achieve this one day. I'm going to do that one day. Sometimes the stories become a reality. Sometimes they don't. But at the end of the day, we all tell ourselves stories. And we notice patterns in storytelling, storytelling that goes through the, uh, you know, human civilization that sort of inspires us. You know, one of those examples is the hero's journey. And uh, another uh, mythological structure that I'm sort of coming across through certain films and cartoons or movies which I watched was the heroine's journey, which, which was sort of visible th for me through Moana, right? The film Moana. That was, that had a different way of structure than the hero's journey. And that was very interesting to observe. I don't know if this is true or not, but this is something I noticed, right? You get the idea. You need to understand the art of storytelling and go ahead and tell stories. Again, how do you learn this intangible skill? I really honestly don't know. Probably by telling more stories. Start by telling a story today. Write a post on Instagram that says, you know, you, where you write a mini two to three line story in the captions. Then you learn from other storytellers and learn the tricks. Then you write better little stories. Then one day you write a bigger story. Then you, one day you write a bigger, bigger, bigger story. You know, you get the point. That's how you sort of learn things, at least for me. So those are the intangible mini skills that you need to sort of learn and master in order to, in order to sort of get good at drawing, character design drawing your own characters, creating environments, creating vehicles, worlds, you know, creating the next Star Wars, basically, you know, something like that, <laughs> right? These are the things. And what you probably need to do right now, right? If you're starting out, if you want to become an illustrator, if you want to become an animator, if you want to become something, take one of those mini skills, put it on a week schedule, or a two week schedule or a 30 day schedule and practice that. That's how you learn and get feedback, right? Show it to some mentors if you have, if you, you know, if they are available to you or you can be your own mentor. Compare your drawings with the drawings of the people you inspire, who you're inspired by and see what are the differences. Ask yourself questions. One of the best things I've learned in the past year was the key to a great answer is a great question. Ask yourselves good question. I never really got that when people said that to me for a very long time. Learn to ask good questions because good questions bring good answers and good answers bring good results. So you need to look at the works of other people who, who you're inspired by and ask good questions. Hmm, what makes a difference? What is the one thing that I can take away from them that I can incorporate into my art that will, you know, 
exponentially improve my art form? What is the one skill that they are using or one trick that they are using that I can use to sort of make my art better? What is the one mistake that I'm making that they're not making that I can use to get you know good at or better at art? These are the questions. You need to look for good questions. You know, these are the questions I learned from by reading books and things like that, but right? So ask yourself better questions and, and get feedback. Feedback is the most important thing. And uh, one of the reasons I am sort of split on my opinion on whether art schools are important or not, because art schools have teachers and teachers give you feedback. If you're learning things on your own, it's very hard to get feedback. And what you what you can learn in a year or two will take, say, five years, like what I did, right? I, I learned all these things by myself. You know, I learned how to draw everything by myself by looking at things, asking questions, asking questions. I'm glad I did that, actually. And I'm sort of proud of that. I learned these things by myself and just by... I'm, I'm not saying everything was just by me, you know, I'm not like... I, I, I have watched tutorials and things like that, but I had to sort of connect things and make the structure for myself. And the process that I've come up with for, you know, how to draw everything is sort of my very own, which I understood by connecting the pieces and connecting the dots. And I could have done, I did that like in a couple of years, but I could have done that in a year or less than a year if I had a teacher. That's why I keep telling people, get a teacher. Uh, or some sort of a mentor or something like that who can correct your mistakes and give you feedback. So these are the tangible drawing fundamentals and the intangible drawing fundamentals that you need to learn one bit at a time, one by one, in order to learn, in order to start and learn drawing. All right, here's the practical part of things. I'm gonna tell you how I learned drawing and art you know, not from not knowing anything to where I am today, which is sort of, uh, I'm decent at it. I'm, not, I'm no world's expert, but, you know, uh, good enough for people to, you know, like my stuff. <laughs> you get the idea. I'm going to show you how I did it. And I'm also going to tell you, I'm going to give you a structured plan that you can use to sort of take things forward. And also a way you can make things fun and interesting and make things not boring while learning these fundamentals because fundamentals are boring whether you like it or not but there are ways to make it fun there are ways to cut corners around it um, and you know make the process fun right because that's what here we are here for it may enjoy the process so how i did it so once i realized the fact that the thing that i want to learn was Cartooning and illustrations. These were very specific things that I wanted to learn. I want to draw cartoons. I want to design my own characters. And I want to draw illustrations. Not just any illustrations, you know, illustrations that you can put on a book or a notebook or something like that, right? Once I decided that, I started by doing a daily sketch practice, meaning I started drawing something every day. Now, I just didn't randomly draw everything or something every day. Rather, I try to make sure I hit all the points that I wanted to learn on my particular day's practice. For example, there was a time when I wanted to learn to draw cartoony heads. And I was like, okay, how was I gonna do that? Well, I can do that by drawing lots of heads. So one of the ways I did that was I drew say around 30 heads a day or something like that for a week or so. I came up with some hundred and something heads. Those were all crappy heads. And uh, I copied most of those things by other art, you know, from the works of other artists, but I did that. And I looked at my art and looked at their art and it was like, well, what is, well okay, well, why is it different? Why does mine look different? And why does, why their stuff, you know, looks better? I got my answer. Then I incorporated that and did that. I did that using a daily sketch practice. And that's the plan that you can use. Set yourself up a 100-day practice or 100-day module, right? And to make things interesting, turn that module into a project. Spend 20 to 30 minutes a day on your project. And the way the project should be designed is this. Design yourself a world of characters and cartoons and creatures and things or something. Or give yourself a prompt list. A prompt list that covers different things. Like, you know, you need to be able to draw leaves, trees, houses, vehicles, people, expressions, eyes, nose, mouth, cars, flying cars, banana monkeys. I don't know, something like that, right? 
But instead of just doing these as practice sketches, do them as finished drawings that you finish in one day. This is one way to make things interesting by turning your fundamentals learning into some sort of a mini skill based project. So if you do that project, you have learned that skill because that's a way better, funner way to learn things. Obviously, this is not definitely by no means the most efficient way. If you do more rough sketches and you do more crappy sketches, you'll get better faster. But if you wanna enjoy the process and have fun while you're doing it, if you wanna take things easy and slow, take up the 100 day practice and give yourself a list of things that you have to draw Look for references, very important. You need to see something before you understand how to draw that thing. Then draw that on that particular day's practice. Then you make that and turn that into a finished piece of sketch or illustration that you can show to other people. That is what I did. I kept on doing that and doing that and doing that and doing that. I also have these mini practice sessions where I write, right? For one hour or two hours, once in, once in a week or once in two weeks, I just sit down and just look at other people's work and just ask questions and draw and ask questions and draw, ask questions and draw. This is how I mostly learn drawing by asking questions and drawing the, hopefully what the answers are for those questions. I look at an artist and go, man, their style is very nice. How do they come up, uh, come up with that thing? Okay, I'll ask that question, then I'll draw something or write something down and I, I'll draw something based on the answer. This is how I learn. So the way you can turn your projects, uh, no, no, your drawing fundamental practice interesting by, is by turning your practice into a skill-based mini project. For example, one of the things that I'm practicing right now is my illustration skills, learning to finish illustrations and also draw, drawing some good looking eye candy illustrations. I'm doing that with a project called the People Folk Project, right? With that project, I'm practicing a set of mini skills such as drawing people in a stylistic fashion. I'm practicing my illustration skills, learning how to compose things, learning how to add elements, learning how to you know use colors because I've you know I wanted to sort of improve on that, right? And I'm doing illustrations one bit at a time. At the end of the thing, I have a project with me, and also I have learned a bunch of mini skills that the project taught me. This is how you make you can make things interesting, and uh, yeah, so that's how you do it. That's how I did it at least doing, having some sort of daily sketch practice and doing things. And also I also, I was since uh, during the time when I was very focused on drawing heads, I used to draw sort of a cartoony caricature of all these famous people's heads and, you know, put a coat next to them, which I like from them. And that is something that really helped me, even though the, the, the people who I drew looked nothing like them <laughs> because I was really bad at the time, you know, it helped me. It was, one of the, the the coins I needed had to you know sort of throw in the pond in order to sort of raise the water levels up so that I can take and drink that water. That's the idea behind that thing. So to summarize things, you need to understand how to learn things, and the way you learn things is by defining your skill, dissecting that into mini skills, and taking one of those mini skills and practicing that and taking feedback from what you've practiced and doing a course correction and improving on your practice. You repeat that cycle, that's how you learn. And the drawing fundamentals that I personally use, right, are consists, uh, they consist of intangible and tangible fundamental skills, or tangible or intangible fundamental skills, how you wanna call them, right? And the tangible drawing fundamental skills are lines, shapes, forms, gesture, light and shadow or tone, perspective, color, design, and composition. These are the things I learned. If you just learn these things, you're good to go. Trust me, you're, you, you got the 20% that gives you 80% of the results. The rest is just cherry on top of the cream pie or what, what is that saying? <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. So you get the idea. The intangible skills are seeing and observation. You need to learn how to see and observe things and story. Learn to tell good stories. Read Robert McKee's story. That's a good book. I've heard that's a good book, right? At least something, you know. Learn, learn from the masters who have told good stories in the past. And uh, one other intangible uh, skill which I missed was incorporating things like values 
and principles and courage and your personal life's mission into your work so that is something for another podcast but yeah so the way i did all these things is by incorporating or giving myself a daily sketch practice and i practiced each and every single one of these things and uh, incorporated into my practice then i course corrected by looking at my heroes and asking myself the right questions as to say how they did it and what am i doing wrong and incorporating those answers into my future drawings you keep repeating that and after a couple of years you'll be able to look back and say man i've improved that's how you do it and the way you can make the practice session fun and interesting is by uh in you know creating some sort of a skill based mini project say you want to draw, learn to draw heads do say 30 illustration pieces on drawing heads of famous people and putting your quotes next to them because that's what i did i learned from that mini project at the end of it you'll have a project and you'll also have learned a skill and you had fun during the process of doing that do that so this is how you start and learn drawing start today set yourself 6 minutes or something because that's what i'm doing right now right me and my friend sashi we're dedicating 6 minutes every day to work on our personal projects he's doing he's writing something i'm working on a personal project of mine which is an online class a program that is designed specifically for these kinds of drawing fundamentals and things like that sort of like a start drawing course but anyways i'll talk about that later in the future podcast but you know dedicate yourself 6 minutes and practice all these things dissect all these things and do those things one bit at a time that's how you start and that's how you learn and that's all there is for this podcast actually <laughs> so yeah that's pretty much it thank you for listening to this podcast and the next episode we'll be talking about once you have mastered the art of illustration and drawing and character design and once you're on the top of the world how do you make money out of it how do you make turn it into a business that offers some value to you and to the people around you and i'm going to share my perspectives and thoughts on that in the next podcast so until then Hope you had fun with listening to my crispy voice. <laughs> and yeah, thank you for listening and I'll see you guys in the next one and hope this one was useful. Bye-bye.